Mitch, welcome to uh, Kicking Tables. Uh, we want to talk about Buddy Cop. So I just learned about this game this week, and I understand it's actually on a pre-order right now, only until February 28th. Um, so tell us about Buddy Cop. What is this game? All right, so Buddy Cop uh, came from another game that we did at Blacklist called Brook City. Uh, I worked on that game back in 2018 as a developer, and I just, I really loved the world that the guys at Blacklist, uh, Adam and Brady Sadler, created. Hmm. Uh, but I just wanted something a little faster and kind of small box, just a quick card game that I could whip out and play that let me be that, you know, that cop, I don't know, buddy cop movies, I guess, you know, sure. just, that's the title. Um, that's where it comes from. So it's a, you know, one to two player cooperative game. Uh, where you and a buddy can just take on the role of some cops from old 80s cop flicks and uh, take out some bad guys. We are going to have, or we're planning to have some future releases that up the player count to four players, but for now we wanted to really focus on the buddy cop aspect, so okay. we stuck two players. Yeah, I mean, because you can't be a buddy cop when there's four people around. Exactly. That's, that's yeah, just crazy. <laughs> that's like having Scully and Hitchcock along for the ride. Yeah. <laughs> Is, so is, is did you get like is it Starsky and Hutch type inspiration towards uh, towards this like that sort of uh, that sort of uh, genre I suppose? Yeah, absolutely. So a lot of that was in the original Brook City. There there were um, there was I think a Starsky and Hutch um, type character. There's you know Lethal Weapon, all sorts of different kind of yeah, homages okay. in yep. that game. Um, and then I took the one of the characters from the game I brought over to. To buddy cop and i created a new character and then we just kind of had some fun with it so the publisher there blacklist really loves rush hour so he wanted it to be a rush hour inspired nice. game so um i put in um kind of like a triad inspired uh enemy group and um yeah just kind of the the themes and, and what's going on in the operations or the scenarios that you play really um kind of speak to to rush hour fans uh, what, please what... tell me that one of your characters is three days from retirement not in this game. <laughs> I have other uh, other cops planned, yeah, but uh, not in this one. All right. What is the actual gameplay? What what are you doing in the game? So the game itself has sort of a river system where you have a, we call it an action track, where you have four cards in front of you. Um, the card on the farthest left is free to play, and then as you go farther to the right on those four cards. They get more and more expensive. Um, so you're paying your resources and trying to play as many cards on your turn as you can, uh, as efficiently as you can. And sometimes you have to swap uh, cards on that action track in order to make them cheaper. Like you have a really good card that's good, but it costs too much, so you have to find a way to switch it to get it into the cheap spot so that you can play it this turn. Um, so it's really heavy resource management mixed with dice rolling and Ameritrash, shoot them up kind of goodness. Nice. And it's co-op, so are you, are you able to help your partner out if they need something? How, how does the co-op come into play? Yeah, exactly. So it is co-op, and you can help your, uh, your partner out. So the, when you play a card, you can pay the cost to play the top part of the card. There's kind of like two sections of text on each card. So you can play the top part by paying the cost, but there's also a bottom part to the card, which we call the prepare effect, where you can prepare or help your partner prepare. So you can discard the card without paying for it, and you just throw it off your action track, and you can get whatever resources are on the bottom. Um, okay. So sometimes it's uh, grit, which is the resource that you use to play cards. Sometimes it's cover, which is your defense. Uh, and then there's other various things. And you can share those with your partner. So I can give my partner some cover, or I might be able to give my partner an action to swap two cards on their uh, action track so that on his turn, he's ready to go. He knows exactly which cards he's going to be able to play, uh, hopefully at the at, you know the cheapest cost possible. Okay, I got you. So I, I saw that also that there was a solo mode available. Is that just you playing both cops, or is there special rules for playing solo? It's not special rules. We just made it so that you can play just as one cop um, you go out there lone wolf style. Oh, lone it doesn't, wolf. yeah, none of the rules change. There's no, like, in solo mode, do this. It's exactly the same. Uh, you're just playing with one cop. You don't have to two-hand it. Okay. okay, okay. Now, I understand there's scenarios in the game. Is that right? Yeah, so this this box set will come with three different operations, uh, or scenarios. We call them operations. Okay. Uh, um, there's also a Kickstarter, not a Kickstarter, a pre-order exclusive <laughs> uh, operation that you get just by, by pre-ordering. And each of these scenarios comes with 
um, several different cards to represent locations that you'll be moving around in and encountering all the different criminal factions, and then also um, special rules, text, and, and a little bit of flavor in each one, kind of letting you know what you're doing in that, uh, in that operation. So how are the scenarios, uh, like, is there, is there a randomization available in the scenarios uh, or in the operations so that it's different every time you play? Uh, how, do you, how do you get that, like, just randomization into the game? Yeah, so one of the ways that the randomization happens is that each of the uh, scenarios or each of the operations comes with four different location cards, and you lay them out on uh, on the main board adjacent to each other, okay. and that's completely randomized. So which locations are next to each other changes game per game. Um, and then also the other randomization comes from just the enemies that you're going to be fighting and which enemies or criminals um, appear in each of those locations. Okay, that's cool. Now, I always like to look at sort of the development process of a game and kind of get the behind-the-scenes look. And I'm curious what, uh, what kind of issues did you have as you were developing the game? Is the game uh, what you imagined right now, or did it start out as something else? And kind of how did it morph through its life? It started out very different. When I initially started, I wanted to make Max Payne. Like, <laughs> I, I love that old video game. I yep, wanted to yep. make a dark, dirty cop game. Um, and, and more like Lone Wolf style, more like a solo type game. Maybe you'd play with a partner. But I found this... Uh, I, I tried a lot of different uh, mechanisms, too. I was just going to have, like, a regular card game where you have four or five cards in your hand and you're playing cards and doing whatever. And it just... No matter what I did, it felt like I'd played that game before. Um, so I finally found this this river mechanic with the action track that I'd never played a game like that before as a solo or cooperative game. I see that a lot in competitive games, um, yeah. but not in a cooperative game. So that really hit me. And then when I started messing around with that design, I realized that it needed to be a very different game. It needed to be buddy cop with two players kind of going back and forth. You can still play it one player, and it's great one player. I play it a lot that way. Um, but it just felt like the cooperation and being able to help each other out by giving each other these resources was the way to go. Yeah. Now, do you still have an idea for a Max Payne game? Like, are you still thinking, well, I, I really like that theme. Are you going to try to do that sometime? I would love to do that. I don't have a game for it at the moment, but yeah, I'm always kind of tossing around ideas in the back of my mind. I, I just really love that that game, and uh, there there isn't a board game that's really done that. Right. So I I would love to do that at some point. Well, that's, that's awesome. Cool. I, I think it would make a great board game. I, I I can't figure out exactly how you would do it, but just that that universe is is ripe for a for a board game. I think. Yeah, yeah, I agree. <laughs> so. Future plans, you know, you mentioned, uh, you know, an extra scenario. Is there, are there other plans to, you know, with expansions or, you know, um, you know, any additional content being planned? Yeah. Yeah. I've, uh, I don't know how much I'm allowed to say, but uh, <laughs> there's definitely future plans. Um, okay. I've, I've got a lot of ideas. I've already created a lot of stuff. So it's very much going to depend on sales. Um, but if, you know, enough people buy this game, I've got loads of extra content for this. That's awesome. And speaking of sales, so right now it's it's on pre-order until February 28th. Um, what happens after that? What happens if I miss the pre-order? Um, I know for sure that it's going to be available on the Blacklist Games web store. Okay. Beyond that, I'm not entirely sure. Obviously, we're going to try and get into retail, but that's, you know, the, the publisher will be taking care of that. I don't have any information about about those kinds of channels. So the pre-order right now is just sort of to get like, make sure you get it when it's first run. Otherwise, you have to wait until it's all done and, and order it later. Is that really the idea? Yeah, that's pretty much it. And okay. if for some reason we couldn't get it to retail, um, then, you know, the, this pre-order system and the Blacklist Games web store would be the only way to get it. Awesome. Awesome. And, yeah. And and when, when is it going to, uh, to be uh, fulfilled, I suppose? The game is 100% done, like it's developed, the graphic design, it's laid out, it's ready to go. So as soon as the pre-order is finished on February 28th, I will be sending it to the, the manufacturer oh. right away. Okay. So oh, nice. Shortly. Awesome. So it's pretty much ready to go. So everybody get in on that pre-order now and you'll, you're going to get it sooner rather than later. What, yeah. uh, before we let you go, uh, Mitch, it's been great talking to you, but what, uh, what do you want everybody to know about this game? Give us, give us one last sales pitch on Buddy Cop and why we should play it. Um, 
I want everybody to know that this isn't just a dice chucking Ameritrash game. It definitely has that for people that want that, but the resource management is pretty heavy in this game, um, especially for such a small box game. So if you're into Euros, if you're into managing your resources and, and uh, you know doing things as efficiently as possible, you're going to like this game. Awesome. Mitch, it's been great talking to you about Buddy Cop. Everybody get out there, do the pre-order. Uh, it sounds awesome. I love uh, solo and co-op games, so uh, this is right up, right up both of our alleys. I know that. Yeah. But uh, Mitch, thank you so much for joining us today. All right. Thanks for having me. All right. Well, thanks, everybody, for watching. Uh, don't forget to go and pre-order Buddy Cop. The pre-order window closes on February 28th, so go over to blacklistgamesllc.com to pre-order that. And remember to subscribe to OMG Nexus.